Hey guys, welcome back. So it's the last round of the Tri-Nations. It is a bit of a dead rubber. Yes, the both of these teams can technically still win the Tri-Nations. But if you look at the log, both of them have to win by almost 100 points. By a margin of 100 points. Do we think that's going to be possible? Probably not. One of them can maybe get a big margin, but I don't think it's going to be that big this weekend. Guys, it's going to be played at the Bank West Stadium. Looking at the history between these teams, it's basically the same as last time because they, drew, they had a draw in the first time they played in this Tri-Nations this year. Ben O'Keefe being the referee, a good referee in Australia. Not the best, but he is pretty good to the standards of refereeing at this moment. Looking at the two teams, both have made a couple of changes. There has been a lot of off-field stuff for the Argentinians, which is why they made a lot of uh, changes to this side because of a couple of tweets that went out from Matera and Petty and then Sosino from when they were 17 or 18 years old as teenagers. Uh, that has now been reversed. Matera has been reinstated as captain. He was actually he was removed as the captain. He was reinstated, but they will not be playing this weekend. But I do know all that type of stuff will have been bothering the team this whole week. It doesn't matter what happened with that. The, the off-field stuff would have been bothering the side this whole week. And they had to make a lot of changes as well. So it's not the same side we've been seeing so far. And remember last week we already saw a, a side with 10 changes. Looking up front they bring in the two big guns at number one and three the guys that scrummed away the other opposition in week one and two when they did play Chaparro and Cordela. Alan Ala Alatawa he comes back in at number three for the Wallabies to also strengthen up their side with Scott Sio and Paenga Mosa. It's two very experience props for the Wallabies up against these two that have been causing problems for opposition so far this year. I'll get to why they have been causing problems as well and why it might be a problem this week as well. Montoya versus Paenga Amosa. Amosa, he's been having some problems at line-out times in a couple of weeks as well. Montoya, he's been great so far. Probably one of the standout players for the Pumas so far this year. In the second row, everything looks different as well. Alamano, he comes in at number four. He is actually a number five lock to my opinion. From seeing him so far. Marcus Cremo, he's on number 5. So he's not on number 7. He's not going to be bothering the props that want to bind uh, to the, his team's props. So that might strengthen up the, the Wallabies' scrum. If he doesn't do that infringement of his. While well, the referees haven't blown it so far. So he just continues with it. He's not going to be doing that. That also means that they lose a very good strength in the lineouts. With Guido Pitti not being there. Probably one of... The best line-out takers in the world. Very underrated in my opinion. Then at number 6 and 7, Grondona. He just made his debut in this tournament. So very inexperienced there. Issa, he's at number 7. Actually at number 8, playing at number 7. I do say he is like Dwayne Vermeulen playing over there. Big runner. He has been playing in France for a couple of years now. And how he goes up against Hooper is going to be an interesting one. Because Hooper, he will be hitting him in a couple of tackles. Ned Hannigan, he went well. In the previous time he did play Harry Wilson up against Bruni. Wilson has had a great season so far. They're talking of him becoming a captain for the Wallabies actually. So that Hooper can focus on his game again. Because well we all know by now when Hooper is captain. His game probably does lack a little bit. He doesn't play as well as he does if he can just focus on his game. Wilson he's one of the few players that have started all the game so far. Then at number 9, Nick White versus Escura. Escura, in my opinion, didn't have a brilliant game last week. Nick White also, to me, he's been playing very laterally. He does run a lot with the ball instead of playing it very quickly. Uh, that did give them a couple of problems with Reese Hodge at number 10. Reese Hodge, he stepped in really well at number 10. Though you could see he isn't a number 10. He does run to the side a lot instead of running straight and getting the ball through. James O'Connor, he's the guy that can take the ball square on to the side. And Nick White and him could maybe have a couple of good runs together there. Nicolas Sanchez, he's been in brilliant form so far for the Pumas. Especially when it comes to goal kicking. De La Fuente, he takes over the captaincy for the side. He has captained the Aguares a couple of times. I don't know about the Pumas, probably one or two times. Up against Paisami and Pattaya, that's a new combination. We haven't even seen it at the Reds yet. 
I think it's actually going well. I had a I had a couple of doubts. Paisami to me isn't the best defender at 13. At 12, it looks a little bit better because he does like running up and giving big hits to the player. So that does cut out the opposition's opportunity to run around you. And that could work very well against the Pumas. Pattaya, he's that dangerous player that just creates things all the time. Unfortunately, he just gets an injury almost in every game he does play. Up against Orlando, who's also the experienced player. That combination, that center pairing plays all the time for the Jaguars. So that is the traditional center pairing for the Pumas that it has been reformed now. Then at 11, Buffelli moves from 15 to 11 again. Dalgi, he's at number 14. He played really well when he did play in the first two weeks. Right, he's at number 14. And Kurabeti at number 11. Who Both of them have also been playing pretty well. Reese Hodge, he's at number 15. He's apparently now the most versatile player to ever don the Wallabies jersey, having played every position in the back line except for number 9. Santiago Carreras, he's at number 15. I don't think he's had the most brilliant games at number 15 before. I don't know, Buffelli is a little bit better to me, but I haven't seen too much of him there, just the two games. And yeah, I couldn't judge too much on that. Guys, I do think that the Wallabies, if they do use the same kind of tactic that the, the All Blacks did, of kind of pinning them back into their own half, the Argentinians will struggle again. That's what the Wallabies, that's what the All Blacks did do. They just kicked into the Pumas half the whole game through and they struggled to get out of their own half. And that's probably a ploy that they're going to do again. Will that give them 100 points though? Probably not. Getting onto the benches, there's a couple of new guys, a lot of new guys actually for the Pumas. A lot of guys I don't actually know that well. Gonzalez, Vivas and Zeiss, that's the front row coming on. Palos, he's the second row. He also made his debut just the other day. So not a very experienced guy to bring on if you do struggle at line out time. Gorison and Bertronau. Bertronau, he's been kind of the bench warmer so far for the side. He's been good when he comes on. I'm happy to see Miotti being on 22. We haven't seen him much at the Puma so far. Very good at the Jaguares. He's still pretty young as well. I don't think we'll see too much of him in this game as well. Probably a couple of minutes. But he's a very exciting talent to see coming on. He does play differently than Sanchez though. He's more of an inside center slash number 10. Then it's Chocobares who's at number 23. Who made his debut the other day. Very strong center to bring on. Falao Fahinga, he's there to score the tries from the back of the malls for the Wallabies. Tupo as well there for his strength. And just that big runs he does come on with. Lucan Salakaya Lotto, he's back from his little bit of an injury he had. Irai Simone and Banks, they find themselves on the bench. So, there's a couple of tweaks that Rennie made. Guys, if I had to make my prediction for this game, I do think the Wallabies have it this time. I have been going with the Pumas for a couple of weeks. I know we have said we shouldn't just kind of discard the Pumas these days anymore, but... After all these off-field stuff, I don't think how they've been preparing that well. They also lost integral parts of their team, especially with Matera and Guido Petty. Very important in their line-out times and very important in their uh, breakdown battle. So, I do think the Wallabies have it. I think it's actually going to be a more of a comfortable victory as well. Especially because if you look at the comments on the Pumas' social media a lot of their fans are angry at them as well they don't even want them to win this game so yeah i do think the wallabies might have this one wallabies by 15 in my opinion let me know your prediction for this game down in the comments below also check out these videos next to me hit the subscribe button and then i'll see you for the next one cheers